Hello, Adam again, and we're back here with the house plants. I'm going to show you how to do some fun stuff with uh, painting in the art layers, but using the other art layers to mask these um, these new painted layers out. Basically, this is going to allow me to paint in some textures, some some shading, uh, but not having to worry about going or keeping inside the lines. It's going to make my life much easier. Something I wished I had when I was at primary school. My teacher used to tell me off going outside the lines, I have now conquered that problem. Let me show you. All right, so if you haven't seen the other video um, on the, the houseplants, it's about reordering art layers. Search my channel for reordering art layers or just art layers and you will see that video. It will show you how I got this construction in the node view and um, how these things are set up and the difference between plant three over here and plant one. Uh, plant two is exactly the same setup. So let's think about shading maybe in, we'll do it in plant two, okay? Um, I'm just going to move it slightly to the side so we've got something to, to work. In fact, before we do that, I'm just going to hide these ones that maybe be a bit easier. So I'm just going to hit the little googly eyes. There we go, because that's kind of, kind of a big plant. Um, and just pull this down a bit so I can see what I'm working with. All right, so what I want to do, for example, in this one, and we're focusing on plant two here, is I want to put in some shading on my plant pot. Um, so I've got my line art and color art. It's very important that you separate these out for this kind of thing because we're going to use the, the fill um, to basically mask off something else. Now the overlay, I've already got this piece, which is for making sure that the plant actually fits inside the pot. Okay, I'm just going to adjust the position of that because it looks a little bit better. I'm going to have to use a different art layer. Now if you have watched my reordering video about reordering art layers, you will see that, um, I'm on the wrong one, there we go, pot, you will see that it doesn't matter that the underlay is at the back because I can reorder these things anyway. Uh, I can plug them in in different orders. So that's not an issue. But we're going to do this via um, a similar setup but I'll show you just an extra trick just in case you want to set this up yourself and uh, you want that uh, added jazz to your to your scene. It's really fun to paint in uh, shading and highlights and any kind of texture like this just because it's all nicely self-contained. You can be quite messy with it. Uh, just be aware that if you are working on something and you want it to feel quite clean when you go into working with the drawings, i.e. you don't have these filters and things that I'm going to show you set up, you are going to have this mess of this texture all around it. So if that's going to be a problem to you, then you would want to create a new drawing, which is Control R or Command R with your mouse over the uh, the node view and plug that one in. And instead of doing what I'm going to do, you're going to use a new drawing and that's just going to be your shading drawing. OK, uh, I'm going to do it self-contained. You'll get the idea about how you could set it up yourself differently uh, when I show you this. So I'm going to click on pot two because this is the drawing I want to use. I will nearly always use the node view when I'm constructing things because it visually makes more sense. You could actually also click on the drawing pot two down here in the timeline. I just find it a little bit harder to uh, to navigate and visually a lot more condensed. So the, the node view is a savior when it comes to things like that. And then in the camera view, importantly, I'm going to use the over uh, activate the underlay. Yeah, so I'm clicking that. So that means if I draw or paint, I've got a, um, an airbrush marker set here, just in case you're wondering. If I paint in there, it's going to naturally, as soon as I let go, go behind all the other artwork because at the moment, it's just normal default filtering and the underlay sits at the bottom of these art layers and it goes right to the bottom there, yeah? Now let me just move these things along so we've got a, visually a bit more space around what we're working on. And uh, it's a good idea to always keep your keep your uh, node view nice and tidy so you can see what you're working on. And you can also, if you wanted to, be really tidy. Oops, don't want to do that. I want to bring in copied and pasted a composite here. And I'm just going to connect these things up. So I think I've misordered those. Yep, that one needs to be at the back. There we go. Um, so you can see how me just moving these things around, the connection to the composite, the, the furthest left is the closest to the camera by default. So this is the same setup, but now it's it's called plant pot 2. 
and this is a composite for this whole plant pot. You'll find this used in um, definitely in animation studios. They will tend to group things, elements, just so they're a bit easier because you don't want like thousands of inputs into one large composite. You kind of want to be able to see what you're working with and often these things will be grouped as well. More about that in a different video. So for now we need to set this up so that the when we paint on the underlay it doesn't default to the back. Same thing as with the overlay. I'm going to move my mouse over the node view and press the return or the enter key and start typing underlay. And now we have this. So I can connect this to pot 2. And importantly, I want to bring this so it's on top of this. So if I was to, let's just say, put it right to the front, so the furthest left, and now I paint on the underlay, it's now on top, which is really cool, but um, it's not masking, it's not doing anything I need it to. So there's more work to be done here to make this, this effect work correctly for me. Now let's go back into the pot itself and see what we've got. So we need the color art to mask the underlay. And we actually are going to want the line art um, as well to come on top because otherwise it's just going to get left behind. So let me paint in some, some color in here. I'm going to go and find myself a decent, uh, maybe this is a nice color actually, might be quite cool. Oops. I'm painting on the line art, whoops, there we go, on the lay. Now that's a good point as I made that mistake um, deliberately, not on purpose. Uh, it's You should basically make sure that your art layer selection is always correct when you're in the camera view because there is no visual indicator what layer you are painting on um, other than if you've got filters set up and this little indicator bar here. The drawing view is quite clear because unless you've got this eye turned on, which is like a replica of the camera view, you can very easily see it only shows you by default the art layer that you're working with. But the camera view is generally better because you can see everything in your scene and it's you know it's just a little bit easier to work with, um, for animating at least. But uh, when you're cr constructing things, you often have to double check what art layer you're on. And after years of using this software, I still sometimes forget. So just make sure uh, that you don't fly through these things because it's kind of a pain to, to copy and paste and undo things and all that sort of thing. Um, all right, so I'm going to go for just a little bit of this fill. Now, if you're wondering what what um, pen I'm using here, it's the paintbrush, and then I scrolled down the, the presets and went to the airbrush marker. This airbrush marker is classed as a textured vector, not a solid vector, but a textured one, which allows us to create something very similar to kind of like a bitmap brush, something like you might see in um, Photoshop. And you can create all kinds of like um, sort of this has got a nice opacity uh, thing on it. So I can create a very painterly thing, but this is a vector still, you know, so it's not creating massive files, uh, huge things that the software is going to crawl with. Um, it's a very cool little brush engine they've got in there. So I've painted this in. Uh, it's a real mess, so I need to sort this out. Um, so let's go back to the node view. Now we've got something visual to work with. We can tell if it's working correctly. So I'm going to, again, hit the return key. Uh, I'm going to, this time, choose color, art. You see where I'm going with this probably now. And I'm also going to hit return and type in line art. So I've got my four art layers all connected up now and they need to connect up to this composite. Now it might this might start to go uh, make your head spin a little bit and you may starting to make you feel a little bit confused. But let's think um, you know we if we logically go through this, you're going to work this out bit by bit because here's the overlay and we can check within our drawing view. the overlay is the front part of the pot. Then I want um, the shading to be, uh, on the line art now. I've already just worked out a mistake that I'm going to have to correct, but we'll do that in a second. Um, and we've got uh, we've got the the color art, which is the fill. So you can always go back to your drawing tab to check it. Now the initial thing I'm just going to do here is set up the the thing to make the underlay be cut because that's why you're here to watch this video. So we're just going to hit the return key again and start typing cutter. The cutter is basically a mask, yeah? 
And this port on the left hand side is the um, this Venetian mask is the thing the mask goes into. So whatever you want to apply this cutter to, like the overlay, and you can rename these things. I can call this shading. And then I know what it is. And if you want to put a little OL so you know it's on the overlay layer, line art, color art, um, and so on. That's incorrect. It's on the underlay layer. You see how confusing this thing gets? But if you if you call it the right thing, you can put it over here if you want to, or you can just leave it on this side. Um, I would recommend labeling things correctly because it just makes things a little bit easier to remember when you come back to something later on. So I need to apply this cutter to here. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key whilst I've got it clicked and it will snap in, then let go of your mouse. And now it won't do anything yet because I need to then filter the color art into the mask port. Yeah, but I need to invert that mask and you can't animate this, this mask kind of inversion. It's sort of set, but if you double click it, now it's inverted. Now you might be wondering, yeah, but you can still see this. It's because I have a, a line a tangent coming from the pot there. So if I unhook that, everything is going through a filter. Now it might look a bit weird and wrong. That's because we've lost part of um, a connection. So the color art is only currently acting as a mask. So I need to pull another tangent out to the back and now it's connected to there. The same with the line art, another tangent to the back and that's created that line. Now this isn't perfect because of the fact that we have this slight line there and that is because without going into too much more detail, um, the, a line, if you press K to see the strokes, it goes halfway, basically goes through the middle. So the fill has only gone, if you see as I toggle between them, it only goes halfway through. And I've used this color art as the mask. So to get around this, I would have to create um, something else, a different setup to, to allow this to work. Uh, because if I put the, the line at the front, it's now gonna go in front of the actual plant pot itself. So the way to really quickly solve this would be to, instead of just keeping a perfectly separate line and color, what we could do, press K to hide those strokes again. I'm going to cut this, paste it on the color, and then just keep it like that, you see? So I'm not quite sure why that's a different color pot line. There we go, that'll do. If you're a perfectionist, you'll want to go and add that bit in. But there we go, it's all sorted. So now what we've done is I've pasted the, the line onto the color art, which is, if you can see, that line is just there. So this line art, as it appears on top, it's not interfering. It's not interfering with the, the plant. So that might seem a little bit confusing. Um, it is quite a complicated setup we've got there. Uh, oh, now I need to move, you see this isn't quite correct. I now need to move the line to the front. And now it appears on top. So you see how it gives it this kind of highlight? It tells you which layer you have selected. Um, and so it's quite easy when you click on these things, it will tell you which thing. There's a bit of a visual indicator there, uh, which one I'm working with. I'm so glad you stuck around with me whilst I uh, I struggled through that because there was a little bit of, um, it's like the thing where you do advanced driving and you have to, I've not done it myself, but I've heard people do it and they say you have to basically explain absolutely everything you're doing. So you're like turning and um, changing gear and all this kind of thing. It's the same when you teach and also do the thing. Uh, so you're talking and teaching and um, it's a little bit complicated sometimes. But we got there in the end and you can see the setup. I've basically divided all the art layers up into their own filters. You can rename them like I did with the shading. I've got a cutter with the color art cutting it and I've put the line of um, the top part of the pot at the back so it looks better. And now I have a nice fancy pot. I'm gonna press A to turn that back on 
Um, so I can go in and add shading to these, I could add shading to the leaves, and you can obviously uh, you know, add more complications to this if you want to by adding more uh, drawing layers and using them to you know, divide up your drawing. So it's not just on those four art layers, it can spread across multiple drawings and you can just carry on working. Um, ad infinitum, uh, create amazing drawings with lots of shading and uh, people will be like, wow, I didn't realize you could do this in Toon Boom. But yes, you can. You just need to play around with it. The important thing about this is that this is set up for animation. So although you might be thinking, well, I could just create that in Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever. Yeah, you could, but you can't animate it as easy. And this thing is set up for animating now. So um, the steps to go forward to make the plants animatable and divide things up and allow them to be props for characters to pick up is not very far and you're in the ecosystem of animation so that's what makes it really special thanks for watching i hope you can hear the windy window outside um, we're uh, entering the the start of spring and exiting winter here in the uk so the wind is having its last uh, little howl at me um, but thanks again and uh, i hope it was useful <laughs>